If I'm coming to service like I came this morning, I do not come to say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, give me a word for your people. Mm -mm, I don't do that. I didn't do that here. Some people do that. Then you should not be a pastor. Then you shouldn't be a pastor. You shouldn't be a pastor because a pastor doesn't function like that. A pastor brings systematic teaching. There is a curriculum that a pastor follows because that's how people are built up and matured. So I don't come here and say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, give me a word, a word for this crowd. A pastor, according to 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 2, must be able to teach, up to teach. A pastor must be able to explain. That is, he has the ability to teach. The pastor must study to show himself approved to God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Rightly dividing the word of truth. A pastor in second timothy 3 15 and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in christ jesus that is a pastor must be acquainted with the holy scriptures verse 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable of philemos useful advantageous for teaching or explanation didascalia for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness titus chapter 1 verse 9 titus chapter 1 verse 9 put it up holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine but to exhort and to convince the gainsayers so a pastor must have received teaching a pastor must be taught then in turn he will teach others what he is taught that's being a pastor not a, a, a word a word a word lord jesus a word your people need a word father give me a word no it's not a word matter it's labor say labor a pastor is a laborer you know laborer that's what i'm doing here he must be able to teach as he has been taught second timothy 2 2 the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. The same. The same. Not a word. The same. Commit to faithful men who shall in turn be able to teach others also. Say I hear you. Say I hear you. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 17. Mm -mm. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Especially they... Who labor? Who labor? They who labor. They who labor in word and doctrine. Say labor. That is not inspirational preaching and teaching. What I've just shown you now that a pastor must do is not inspirational preaching or teaching. This is doctrine. This is labor. This is, this is the cocoa. <laughs> the cocoa of ministry. That is basically the pastor comes to church to teach. So a pastor has to prepare his sermon. He has to study. I study, I pray, I research, I wait on the Lord to give me what he's saying to his people. All of that is combined in my preparation to stand here before you for an hour. And that preparation takes unlimited hours. What I come always to do in this service is to instruct you, to teach you from the study of God's word. However, in prophesying, it's not that logical teaching. It's not logical teaching. It's not logical preaching. It's inspirational preaching or teaching. Inspirational. In fact, a Greek rendering of the word prophesying means instantaneous. Boom. Something that is at the spore of the moment. Something like an unprepared preaching or teaching that comes through you at the inspiration of the moment. So prophesying can be used for all inspired speaking. All inspired speaking. That is instantaneous kind of spore of the moment speaking. You didn't prepare, boom, it just came. And you knew that God is saying this to his church. And you gave it to them. And in it, there's instruction and information that is not prepared. If you observe on the day of Pentecost, once Peter was going to analyze to the people 
what happened <clears throat> notice peter was not speaking by the inspiration of the moment he said this is that logical which was spoken by the prophet joel i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh in the last days your sons and daughters so that was not that was not spur of the moment that was logical teaching or explanation of what had happened on the day of pentecost he gave out a logical sermon he gave out a logical sermon about what god has done in christ he gave them scriptures that they could refer to. He pointed them to David. David in the psalm said, and this is what God has done in Christ. And they said, wow. But before then, the Bible says in verse 4, Peter and all of them were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Spirit gave them utterance. The word utterance means the Spirit gave them ability. They began to speak forth. Speak forth as the Spirit give them utterance and that utterance that the spirit gave them be the inspiration huh yes can we say that acts chapter 2 verse 4 means they were inspired huh yes but do you observe that they were not always talking like that huh okay so later on in verse 42 and 40 to 47 they were listening to the apostles teaching so there was teaching going on but on the day of pentecost peter summarized all and said in the last day saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. Your old men shall dream dreams. This is that. Hallelujah. In other words, he summarizes tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy as speak forth. Speak forth. Tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. He calls it speak forth. Vocal gifts. Gifts of utterance. 